Philippe, hello again. You speak French, don't you? And that's wonderful. So, we talked about it quite a lot. Since last Monday, 15th of June 2015, the Frogans project uh, is now in the priority registration phase for entrepreneurs. So what does this mean? What is this period about? How can EP3FT talk to these entrepreneurs? And this is a word that covers very different realities. Philip, I'd like to remind our friends here that you're in charge of innovation and that you meet with a very large number of entrepreneurs. And you won't contradict me if I say that there is not one type of entrepreneur. There are many different entrepreneurs. Well, yes, there are many different families of entrepreneurs. I see quite a lot of them in this room. An entrepreneur is someone who has a project in his mind and who can project himself or herself in the future. So, of course, we're talking about the priority registration period for entrepreneurs, the possibility for anyone to register a network name that will be used later. So if I'm referring to what we talked about when we talked about the ecosystem with the little squares, well, today we are talking about entrepreneurs having a project in relation with the publishing of content using the Frogans technology. Of course, there will be another period for entrepreneurs who are looking at developing tools for supporting publication for indexing sites or for whatever other purpose. I mean, the asset of our project is the uh, imagination of our community. At the moment, we're focusing on publication projects. OK, thank you, Philip. The slide behind us is uh, sort of betraying my question, but it's important we all remember what we're talking about when we talk about priority registration. What can be uh, recorded or registered as now? Well, at the moment and for four months, what can be registered? Well, the yellow page on the screen, that is one name for the Frogans network, which we call a dedicated network, dedicated to one specific use, which is not the uh, public one. Just a quick reminder, by the way, we have three types of Frogans network. And there again, we're mostly to talking about the one in the middle tonight, but the public network is the one that starts with the word Frogans or one of its transcription in one of the 10 language categories, so in Russian or other languages. And then you have the intranet, and that's the word intranet or one of its translation in one of the 10 linguistic categories. So quite typically, Frogans, well, the public network, are the uh, simple addresses in which I can register for the website part, and I coexist with the Frogan brand or trademark. As for the rest, this is only available in my company network. Now, to answer your question today, we're talking about giving the possibility to everyone to record or to register a network name with the format network star site. OK, so who do you need to talk to if you want to register a dedicated Froga network? OK, so I have this idea to register. Uh, I'm going to use uh, any generic trademark. So 
to register um, whatever, I have to talk to an FCR administrator so that a company uh, listed with the Frogans registry that has the ability of performing this operation that we call registration. We had 12 recently, we'll have more soon. We're present in three continents already. There will be more of these administrators, and these account administrators can register network names in any uh, language system. We're not excluding, as we're talking to entrepreneurs, we're not excluding the possibility for them to become a FCR account administrators because, as shown in this slide, when you become the holder of a Frogan's network, means that you become the holder of all Frogan's addresses registered in this network. So we're talking about people who will be managing a large number of Frogan's sites. Well, that's a difference as compared to the concept that everyone is uh, familiar with. If I am the owner of a network here, like my network, I can register an unlimited number of uh, addresses after the star. So I'm the holder of the network. Therefore, I'm the holder of all the addresses on this network. Not like in .com, for instance, where the holder of uh, .com is uh, of uh, table.com is different from bottleofwater.com. So I own and I am and I'm responsible for the content published on each of these sites. Then we can use the addresses in any type of dimension. We gave a few examples here, but if I'm a company, I can have my network name, that's the name of my company, and then my site on my products, my uh, branch offices, the languages I use to talk to my clients, to my users, whatever. So there is a lot of flexibility in the way you can create site names once you've chosen the name of your network. Thank you very much, Philip. Now, from a rules perspective, is it possible to register all terms, and if so, how? There are limits. I won't go into details tonight, but they were explained already. First, they've been published, and they've been explained quite often. These are the famous IFAP and FECR specifications, the rule that applied to the validity of a network name and the fact that two names are regarded as being convergent. They can be perceived as being the same name because uh, there are possibilities for confusion. For instance, you can't have a network name that would start with a digit. You want to start with a letter. I'm thinking about something else. Uh, the network name must be a maximum of 28 um, characters. Or if you want to use separators, we would recommend using the hyphen. These are things which are all included in the specifications and that anyone can consult at any time. You can refer to the uh, specifications or you can use the services of these brands or of this operator to test the uh, validity of the network uh, name on the Frogan's uh, site. Yes, at fcr.frogan's. So A star, B star, the still available for registration. OK, so these are technical limitations. Now, coming to the videos of FTC3, and we had a description for this anti-confusion mechanism, which is said 
protects the users from a certain number of confusions which could lead to spoofing, as we say in English, i.e. make you believe that you are on a Frogan's network when you are actually on another one because a CAPS letter was added. You may use the CAPS letter. You can choose the f whatever you want. But if you've chosen the uh, CAPS letter, no one can register the same form without CAPS letter. Yes, there are a certain number of rules for zero and O, for I and L. When there is visual confusion, we consider that the two shapes cannot be registered simultaneously. Thank you so much, Philip. We also said that this was a priority recording period for entrepreneurs. So I'm not an entrepreneur, at least not on paper. I'm probably an entrepreneur in my soul. So do I need to do anything to register a Frogan's network during this period? Well, the answer is very simple. No, you don't need to do anything. We won't ask you any mock-up of your website, any description of your site. We, will ask, we won't be asking for a business plan. This is not our purpose. We will give you the possibility of doing so, and you'll be regarded as an entrepreneur as, at the moment, you register a network name with the objective of publishing in the future. Okay, but if we're dealing with entrepreneurs and they want to publish Frogan's sites, they want to have a name, or they want to work with a project with this uh, priority period. So we have to observe the rules published by OPTF3, OPT3FT. These are not lim limiting rules but or restrictive rules. But you can take a look at them and you'll see in writing most of the things that we're talking about. May I? Yes, of course. Well, there is one rule that everyone needs to keep in mind, and that's the rule of the uh, first arrived, first served. That's the rule on the internet. Yes, it is. During the priority registration period for trademarks, we could give priority to those trademarks who had, uh, uh, who had the uh, the rights over this uh, trademark. But today, anyone can register any word. And person A will register the word, the word stage, for instance, to take a stupid example. And they can do that if they do so before any other person that would have the same idea. So it's first arise, first served basis. All it takes is having the idea, the first one. OK. You talked about having an idea because you don't just want to register a network just for the sake of it. You want to do something out of it. And I'm thinking about your great experience in entrepreneurship. Would you think that in order to inspire entrepreneurship, can entrepreneurs do whatever they please. And how can you inspire people? What do you tell people when they ask you, OK, I'm fine with having a network, but what should I do with it? Well, I've been an entrepreneur for 20 years. And if there is one thing that entrepreneurs don't like is to be told what they should do. An entrepreneur has an idea. Maybe they stole it somewhere, maybe they developed it in their own way, but it's a totally personal type of approach, being an entrepreneur. However, we try to write 
and classify the different type of uh, content publishing initiatives for the Frogan's sites. And we've identified four classes. So it's four plus one to be more specific. The first class, bottom left, I'm an entrepreneur with a rather corporate type of approach, I'm representing the interest of a brand, and I want people to talk about this very specific brand. Think in terms of marketing, communication for one company, for one specific type of products, and do that at global level. So if I'm working on the digital communication strategy of my company, I will think about digital communication through the Frogan's site uh, channel. So I can publish content using the Frogan's technology to support my digital communication. So it's quite a kind of a traditional uh, approach. So you just talk about you. Yes, I talk about me, my business, my clients, my world. It's the entrepreneur, which is kind of self-focused. OK, fine. Then we have a second case, top right here, in which I'm not talking about my company. I want to talk about a specific topic. A specific topic can be anything. It can be sports, it can be uh, endives, whatever. So I'm going to aggregate content. All contents are not from me, but I'm going to aggregate content around one specific topic. And well, then it's a bit like, well, sports star, for instance. I'm going to get collect sport results, for instance, and I'm going to publish that with a nice format, and everyone throughout the world can get the result of the World Cup in soccer, for instance. This is well. This in this idea, you have. Everything gathered under one same roof. You have all the information about one event, and I self-represent myself as the leader, i.e. the person, the expert on this very topic, whether at local or global level. So these are generic terms. Yes. I don't know if you're a collector, but if you are, it can be a fan club, it can be... Typically, being a bit cynical, that's someone who would use information created by others to host them under one kind of umbrella structure. And if we move on with the profiles, and I'd like to remind you, you all that this is not an exhaustive list, by the way. We worked it out. We designed it from the feedback we got from the market. But it's just a way to show that anything's possible. So we have profiles who can use uh, Frogan's domain name to publish a site to talk about their business, about their passion, and reach an increasing lot an increasingly large audience. Yes, because the idea is that thanks to the technology, you can publish on all medium media. On You have many people who want to publish on mobile phones. They want to make sure that the information is available to everyone. And the interest of the Frogan's technology is obvious in such a situation. The third category is bottom left here. That's the entrepreneur called social entrepreneurs. These entrepreneurs 
Okay, when you say social entrepreneurs, you think about uh, uh, um, a website to, to meet people. But no, this is not what I mean. It can be much wider than that. These are the online sites to connect people to others according to their tastes, to their profile, preferences, whatever. And in that case, I'm going to have to bring together in kind of a walled garden in my environment, I'm going to invite people to communicate. And the Frogan's technology is perfectly suited to that. And we could think of this site called Family. So the network name is Family. The and then you have the, the, the name of the specific family. And you can connect the uh, families by changing the site part of the address. And being very cynical, if I'm a social entrepreneur, I'm going to use the connections that I'm going to create between individuals who are using my site and my network. Now, what is interesting in, uh, in what you're saying is that you're actually going to a notch further because you're actually encouraging people to create content on your network. Absolutely, absolutely. I give them a template, um, a publication or a publishing model. Um, sometimes it's just guidelines or, or, or a technical solution. You could actually make um, a publishing tool available to help your users uh, enrich uh, the site and uh, therefore the underlying service. You know, there are a lot of uh, a lot of ideas, and there is a lot of value in this because you're fulfilling the promise of internet. Uh, where it's easy to publish content and while connected to others. Okay, and I believe we could go even further. Absolutely, we could go even further. We're now in the fourth group of entrepreneurs. This is where you give more uh, freedom. That's more than the wall garden. You give your users more freedom so they can publish the content they want the way they want it to be. And by doing this, I become more of an enabler. I'm giving power to users, users like you and me, um, who are then free to publish whatever they want. It could be um, a hoster, for example, uh, a hosting company that says, I'm hosting, and you are the users. You can use the site name on my network to publish whatever you want to publish. And when I say it, I mean it. No, you have no restrictions. There are no guidelines. I'm giving you part of my building or part of my real estate, and you, which is the network, and you do what you want with it, which means you could partially own this uh, part of it. OK. Right, so you become, they would become a partial owner. So it's not a registrar that makes a domain name. Uh, domain name is available. You're actually taking people inside the network. But you are the holder of it, according to Wiz. Yes, uh, Wiz shows who holds what network and if a person or an entity holds a network this person is then accountable for all the addresses published under that network and all the content so of course this means you have to mon monitor things i'll give you an example if I hold Estrad Star, and if one of my users 
is going decides to publish under the name Estrad Star and then uses a, a brand name without getting approval of that brand first. Whoever this user is, he or she is not liable. I am liable. So it's a very different relationship between the network holder and the people publishing. Um, the kind of relationship that could use a contract, for example, between the two parties to make sure that uh, certain rules are uh, uh, stuck to, complied with. Content published by Frogans could be illegal in certain countries, uh, depending on the country legislation. So again, it's the uh, the network holder who is responsible. Okay, right. So, if, so if, if you are the holder, and if one of your users doesn't uh, follow certain uh, requirements or, or rules, uh, this uh, Frogan's site could then be uh, stopped. Absolutely. The, the, the users, the provisions in the users' uh, agreement would, uh, would apply, and sanctions could be taken. Okay, so so the second part, the name site, uh, would be up to users. That way they could publish anything. It could be, uh, for example, a small company. If it's a small company that um, doesn't want to place its name next to Frogans, Frogans star my company's name, instead they would, they would probably prefer uh, company star uh, company name, right? And this, is, this would be absolutely possible. And to conclude, there is probably a lot more for entrepreneurs. I'm sure we haven't thought about all uses that could be made. There is also this fifth option. Someone who comes in and who invents something completely new, who comes up with something completely different. Uh, you know, it's as we know, it's difficult to predict the future. Uh, but uh, who knows? Maybe someone who's listening right now uh, is, uh, you know, thinking about something completely new and or how to use and leverage fro Frogman's technology and, and invent new uh, uses, a new usage. Our job at uh, OP3FT is to support these people. We are committed to making resources available, specification software libraries, uh, uh, Frogan's uh, player, which is the, the navigation soft, as well as additional uh, advice, uh, consultancy, and support to create different uh, types of uh, different ways of using this. Okay, now let's go one step further. Again, we've been talking about and to entrepreneurs, but uh, OP3FT and Frog Frog Frogan's technology cannot fulfill the promise of internet, where the internet production is available to all without entrepreneurs and without developers. As you said, OP3FT is making all kinds of solutions available. The same thing is true for the FCR operator. But uh, how about the general public? Uh, earlier on, we were talking about the search engine. OP3FT is not making uh, any uh, um, search engines uh, available. OP3FT will enable this with new technology bricks. But at the end of the day, it's really the developers who are going to do the work. That is correct. Uh, the deployment of uh, Frogan's technology 
it comes in different phases. We have the priority period for entrepreneurs, and then there will be a beta period for developers. Developers including uh, software uh, companies, uh, developers, and tools will be made available. So OP3FT will support them with software libraries, um, and uh, OP3FT will also help with the uh, deployment and the distribution of uh, a design FSTL tool for designers. OP3FT will uh, support all members of uh, the ecosystem who can uh, create value. And they can then, in turn, use uh, use these. It's a, Again, it's an open standard. We have the technology. They can decide to use it to create sites, businesses, and you name it. So all this is taking us to the next phase, which is this big star, which is the opening of the registrar. So this is when the site publication and the registration of all sites uh, both on network or sites will become possible. So the opening of the registrar will probably uh, take place sometime early 2016. Well, I certainly think it's uh, worth talking about this now. Entrepreneurs are oftentimes developers. I'm sure they are uh, very interested in these ideas. So, coming back to the uh, priority period, um, I would like to insist on the word priority. Registrations are, are possible now, and if you do register a network, Rogan's, uh, network name now, you will, you will, uh, your payment will become, or the payment period will start only at the time of that star. Correct? Yes. We do not want to ask entrepreneurs to pay uh, additional costs. So, in a sense, we are offering. Uh, you get a free period be be between the uh, registration, the time of registration, and the opening up. So the operator is offering, right. And uh, again, I would like to give you uh, an example. If today I register my name between now and, for example, Earth, early 2016, I won't pay until it starts. And if I open in 2016, I will have uh, the same thing for 2016 and 17. So that's the time you may need to develop your business uh, as an entrepreneur. That's right. That's right. It's very proactive. You can register a word or several words to make sure that further down the road, at the time of the, the site publication, it becomes, I can, I can register it. OK, Philip, thank you very much. Um, why don't you switch hats now? Um, I would like you to, to wear your uh, Frogan's Technology Publishing uh, expert hat. For those of you who were not here during the earlier period, uh, this um, could be uh, of interest to you. We're going to take a look at uh, some uh, Frogan's sites. Uh, yes, there is one that I want to share. It's a new one, as a matter of fact. It's a new one, and it was developed in Chinese. I know we have a few Chinese people with us, actually, so if you see any mistakes, make sure you let us know. So I think it's, it's, it's interesting to illustrate the fact that uh, it is now possible to use a Chinese language as well. 
Right. So again, the fragrance addresses can be can be registered into different categories: uh, J Chinese, Japanese, Korean, uh, uh, Thai as well, Cyrillic, Devanagari for uh, India, Latin, and all languages going from right to left. That is Arabic and Hebrew. So, we're going to, this example falls in category number two. This is people who are thinking about publishing uh, information, content that they have aggregated. Uh, so, the result of aggregated content. So, you can see the star, there is the star right there. See, the star is right there. The world, which is right before, so on the left, is traditional Chinese. It's stock market. And the one on the right is the, the name of the, uh, the client, the client of this particular service. Okay, so imagine now you're checking your investments, the stocks you own. And for each line, on each line, you have a stock. Notice that in Chinese, when it's going up, it's red. Uh, in, in China, red is the color used to celebrate something. And when the stock price is dropping, negative percentage, it is green. So, we have the name of uh, the stocks. We have one, two, three, four, five. You have the, the variation since the stock market opened. And on the right side, you have uh, the listing. So, this is at the time. Uh, it's 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. It's the price of the stock at that specific point in time. So you could have multiple pages. You could have, a, you could track a lot of stocks. So this is the Frogan, Frogan's site. So you could decide to uh, click on one of these lines. Let's click on the first one. And when you do this, it opens another site. So this other site is the uh, the site of the, that particular stock. So here it is. I think it's the Shanghai Utility Company. So there we have the minimum, maximum during the day since the stock market open, opened. We have the price of the stock and how much it went up or down since the beginning of uh, since, since the stock market opened. And then we have charts or the evolution of uh, that particular stock price over the past seven days or 10 days or 15 days. So when, when I clicked, we opened a second Frogan's site. Is that what you said? That is correct. So this one is the site for that specific stock. The other one is has the entire stock portfolio. So the address is different. The network name, however, is the same. So, so all these sites are published under the same network name. Again, it's stock market in Chinese for this particular one. 
So as you can, as you may have noticed, there is um, a commercial banner at the bottom here, which uh, is a way to generate value. And by clicking on it, you, it will take you to uh, a website. So there are gateways between Frogan's sites and websites. With a simple click, you can go from one to the other. You can go from, from a Frogan's site to a website and from a website to a Frogan's site. Let's click on another uh, stack. Here it is. So this one has a different name, different company. You can see that the numbers are not the same. And each fragrance site can be diminished. That way you can leave them on your desktop or even on your mobile device. So it simply now has the name of the stock if it's up or down, and its value at instant value. Is it updated periodically? You can't, it's, it's dynamic. It, you can't click on that compact triangle, but every five seconds, for example, you could ask it to be updated. So it is permanently refreshed. OK, now let's click on the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one. And you can then minimize them. You could uh, move them around. You can drag them in your uh, on your computer. And there is one interesting feature to remove all fragrance sites simply by clicking, double clicking, sorry. You double click on the tab. If you have an Excel spreadsheet, you can double click and, and if you double click again, they reappear. Okay. And of course, you may, as you all noticed, this is a Windows environment. That is correct. Whether but it works just the same way on Linux or Mac. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Philippe, ne t'en va pas. Philip, please don't go. Please don't go. It works on mobile. We saw this earlier. Um, how about a few questions on the uh, priority registration period for entrepreneurs? Any questions? I remember that there were some limitations about the use of the name Frogans. For example, if I wanted to call my my site Super Frogans, I can't do that, can I? Interesting question. Maybe we should ask the question to legal. Do we have anyone from legal? Julie, you want to you want to join me on stage? You were on the previous conferences. Um, we're happy to have you back. Please, please. Good evening. Thanks, Julie. Thanks for joining me. Uh, Julie is responsible for uh, OP3FT Legal. So the question again is, can we use the, the name Fragrance in, for, for, for your products or services sold online? The answer is yes and no. Yes, but there are cer certain rules that you need to follow. There, uh, there is a charter uh, which will soon be published uh, and which ex sets out exactly how the brand can or cannot be used. You gave an example, um, Super Fragrance, for example. If it's one word, super fragrance, one word, it won't be possible. You always need to make a, make a distinction between fragrance, the brand, and whatever is next to it. 
you need to separate them. So it will only be possible if the name of your product or your service is actually Super Frogans. So there has to be a, a, a connection. So to use our brand, you need to develop a service or a product or an initiative that has the same name. And if and only if that's the case, you can then uh, use the name. But, but you cannot just use it because you want to use Frogans. Simply, simply because that's not the philosophy of the Frogans uh, project. If we decide to authorize you to use the brand, it's because we want you to do something with Frogans. It's not just to use the brand awareness of uh, Frogans. If you have a project, if your software, if you sell a software, for example, which you could, you could decide to call it Super Frogans, right? Um, and in that case, you could actually promote your software called Super Frogans, uh, and, and then you would be able to use the name. Once again, I think I think we will discuss this in further detail during FTC five. You would have to sign a license uh, with us. Okay, I hope your um, I hope your uh, I answered your question. What does that mean, sign? Well, you need to make an online request. There will be a form. It's very simple, very straightforward. And what we're asking in that form is to tell us what you want to do with our brand, and then we will give you written permission to use the brand. And it's a license. It, it, it's a numbered license, and that numbered, that that license, the numbered license is published. Um, all authorizations are published, and everyone thereby will know that OP3PFT gave authorized such and such person to do such a such thing. Okay. So again, you'll see it, it, it'll be very straightforward. It's an online uh, form. The rules will be uh, very explicit. We've always tried to be very explicit. Uh, you know, generally things are with us are simple to understand. So when we get your request, well, we will produce a license, and with that license, you can then use our uh, brand brand name in with your products. Um. Okay, thank you, Julie. Donc. Uh Okay, so Frogans as a brand is also serving entrepreneurs. I don't believe we had any additional questions. No additional questions? Yes, there is one additional question. There we go. Si je suis titulaire de. If I hold uh, a network, do I need to pay for all the sites under that, under that name? The answer is yes. You have to pay for the right part, part and the left part. It's the same as for the network name. Take the API of the FCR to uh, register, to make a registration, to book a registration, and that will then be invoiced by the FCR administrator, account administrator. Okay, Philip, thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed. And again, the priority registration period for entrepreneurs has just started two days ago. If you have any ideas, any, make sure you talk to your FCR account administrator. Make sure you talk to your preferred advisor. And why not become an FCR account administrator yourself? And then you can then um, register the name or the term of your choice. Okay, let's move on to the next presentation.